Now we're going to take a closer look at Inventor's user interface. First activate the project window and make sure the accelerated productivity project is the active project. It doesn't have to be the highlighted project, although it can be, but it does have to have the green check next to it. Double click it, or highlight it, and then click the apply button to place the check mark next to the accelerated productivity project. Now click the done button to close the dialog box and then open the new file dialog box. Each template has a different interface mode, but the differences are subtle. We'll start by looking at the user interface in the part modeling and sketch environments, and then we'll look at the other environments as you proceed through the courses. Double click the standard part icon to open a new standard part. This is the sketch environment. You can tell that you're in the sketch environment because you can see the grid lines for the first sketch of the part. Sketch 1 is the active line item in the browser, and the sketch tab is the active tab in the ribbon. To exit the sketch environment, click the finish sketch command. Now we're in the part modeling environment. Part 1 is active in the browser, and the modeling tab is the active tab. If you look in the title bar, you can see that Inventor has given the part the name Part 1. The default name is Part, with a suffix 1, 2, 3, and so on. When you save the file, the name will appear in the title bar, and at the top of the tree in the browser. The general process of creating parts is to create sketch geometry in a sketch, and then use the geometry in the part modeling environment to create three-dimensional features. So when you're creating a part, you'll bounce back and forth between the sketch environment and the part modeling environment. And as you build your part, the steps used to build it are added to the tree in the browser. Anytime you want to edit an item in the browser, you can right click the item and select edit to edit it. In this case, we're editing a sketch, so the option is edit sketch. If we were editing a feature on a part, the option would be edit feature. So the process is the same. Select edit sketch, and now we're back in the sketch environment, and we're editing sketch one. When you're in the sketch environment, the sketch tab is active and all the sketch commands are available in the tab. You can hold your pointer over a command to get a detailed tooltip describing it. And a command that has a down arrow has a drop down list of alternate forms of the command. For example, you can draw a three point arc, a tangent arc, and a center point arc. All three commands will draw an arc, but the drop down menu gives you more choices to draw it. If you hold your pointer over the undo command, you can see what will be undone when you click it. In this case, clicking the undo command will return you to the part modeling environment. Now you can browse through the commands in the model tab to familiarize yourself with them. When you're finished, edit sketch one and then proceed to the next lesson. An alternate method of editing a sketch is to double click it. Now we're going to take a look at the heads up display. Select the line command, and when you move the pointer into the graphics area, you can see the heads up display on the lower right of your pointer. The box is used to control the size and location of sketch geometry. And since we selected the line command, the next step is to specify the start point of the line. Type the tab key to highlight the X axis box, and then enter half an inch. Type the tab key again, and now the yellow snap dot is locked at half an inch on the X axis. Enter half an inch in the Y axis box, and then type the enter key. Now the yellow snap dot is locked at half an inch on both the X and Y axes. This is the starting point of the line, and now the input box is split into a box for the length of the line, and a box for the angle. Enter one inch, and then type the tab key. Now enter 45 degrees for the angle, and then type the enter key. Type the escape key to close the line command. We've used the heads up display to draw a one inch line at 45 degrees. Now that we've drawn the line, let's look at how it's constrained. Inventor added a construction line when it added the angle dimension. So the line is constrained to the construction line, but it's not constrained to a position on the sketch. If you drag the line, you can see that it's not constrained. 
So the x and y coordinates we entered were what I like to call a soft snap. You'll learn more about soft snaps later in the course. So all you need to know now is entering the coordinates for the start position of sketch geometry like lines and circles does not constrain the geometry to the sketch. It creates a soft snap. The heads up display can be a useful and time saving tool, but for most of this course we'll manually add dimensions to sketch geometry so that you can learn the details of how sketch geometry is constrained. Once you've mastered sketch geometry and dimensions, you can use the heads up display. Just be sure to add the same dimensions that you see in the lessons. In this lesson you'll continue learning about Inventor's user interface and you'll learn how to create a sketch. You should have a new part file open just as you had in the last lesson. Inventor is a modal and visual program. You've already seen an example of Inventor's modal nature when you set the current project to the accelerated productivity project. Currently you're in the accelerated productivity project mode and anything you do in this mode will have different results than doing them in a different project. In particular, files will be stored in the accelerated productivity project folder. Another example of the modal nature of Inventor is the sketch and part modeling environments. When you're in the sketch environment or sketch mode, you draw two-dimensional geometry, and when you're in the part modeling mode, you create three-dimensional features. One of the visual aspects of Inventor is the ribbon. You can see all the commands, and they're easily accessible from any environment. Another visual component of Inventor is the use of the status bar. Click the circle command and I'll show you what I mean. If you look on the left of the status bar, you can see that it says select center of circle. The status bar explains what the next step is, so the next step is to select the center of the circle. I want you to notice the yellow dot on the pointer tends to cling to the X and Y axes. The yellow dot is called the yellow snap dot because it snaps to features in the graphics area. When it does, the constraint is not a permanent constraint which means you can move it after you've snapped to the location. Go ahead and snap the center of the circle on the x-axis. Now the status bar says select a point on the circle. If you look on the right side of the status bar you can see the coordinate point for the yellow snap dot and the radius of the circle. These values will change when you move your pointer. Click anywhere in the graphics area to create the circle. Now I want you to notice that we're still in circle mode. The circle command is highlighted on the ribbon, the status bar says to select the center of the circle, and the crosshair pointer and yellow snap dot is still visible. As I said earlier, the yellow snap dot does not permanently constrain a point. So let's look at how the center point on the circle was constrained. Type the escape key to exit the circle command. By the way, you can exit any command by typing the escape key on your keyboard. Now place your pointer over the center of the circle to highlight it, and then hold your left mouse button down to drag it to a new location. As you can see, the center of the circle is not constrained to a specific location on the graphics area. So you can drag it to a new location. Now let's look at the yellow node on the origin of the sketch. The first sketch of a part has this node which is constrained to the origin, and you can use this node to constrain the location of geometry in the sketch. Click the circle command, and then place your pointer over the node. When you do, the yellow snap dot turns to the green snap dot. The green snap dot permanently constrains geometry, and it's what I like to call a hard snap. Click the node, and then click anywhere in the graphics area to draw the circle. Now type the escape key to exit the command. Now if you try to drag the center of the circle, you can see that you can't move it. We used the yellow snap dot to draw the first circle, which we were able to move, and we used the green snap dot to draw the second circle. The yellow snap dot is a soft snap because the location constraint is not permanent, and the green snap dot is a hard snap because the location is permanently constrained. Click the circle to highlight it, and then type the delete key. In the next lesson you'll learn more about sketch constraints.